He is a civil rights attorney who represents the families of Dante Wright, Trayvon Martin, Michael Brown, Breonna Taylor, and of course, George Floyd's family, Benjamin Crump. And he joins me via Zoom along with George Floyd's brother, Philonis Floyd. Gentlemen, welcome. Good morning. Good morning. Mr. Floyd, if I could begin with you, after the verdict, you said we are able to breathe again. Do you feel some relief? Uh, yeah, it's, it's amazing that uh, the world that we live in, uh, this, this country, they always said uh, it's freedom for all. And I think today, Americans, they understand that they can see it. It's possible because the officers, they're all being held accountable. And that's something that nobody has seen in this country. So this has been a great start, but we have, uh, we have a, a long journey ahead of us and we're gonna keep pushing forward. Mr. Crump, on Twitter, you called the verdict painfully earned justice. Does this verdict set a new precedent for policing? It is my hope, Bruce, that this verdict will set a precedent that when we say with liberty, all of us, uh, African Americans, Hispanic Americans, Asian Americans, Native Americans, all of us uh, can feel that we are part of this idea of equal justice under the law. And it was painfully earned, Bruce, because unfortunately, George Floyd was tortured to death to get us this historic moment where you will see police held accountable for unjustly killing a black person who was face down, handcuffed, and unarmed. And Mr. Crump, President Biden and Vice President Kamala Harris watched as that verdict was rendered, watched from the White House, and shortly thereafter addressed the nation. Many people said it was the right message at the right time and set the proper tone. Your thoughts? No, I, I think it is, Bruce, because America, we're better than what we saw on that video of Chauvin's knee on George Floyd's neck for nine minutes and 29 seconds. Uh, we have to be a more just America where Breonna Taylor gets the opportunity to sleep in peace without the police busting open her front door at one in the morning on a no-knock warrant and mutilating her with six bullets, where Ahmaud Aubrey is lynched for a jogging while black, not too far from Jacksonville, uh, and it's in 2020, not 1950. We're better than that, and we're better than what we saw with George Floyd we can have a world where he gets an opportunity to take another breath and we can all breathe a little more freer and easier because we stood up against the inhumanity and the injustice together as brothers and sisters saying we're better than this. Let me pick up on that, Mr. Floyd. I heard you say you and the family aren't just fighting for George anymore. How has that fight uh, broadened? Oh, man, it's, it, it's amazing because uh, this world was filled with darkness. And the only way to take away darkness is to have light shed. And that's what this case did, because the only way to take hatred out of people is to show them love. So uh, Dr. King always spoke of that. But the fraternity that we're in, we didn't ask to be in this. Uh, we have so many others. It's like a, a never ending cycle. Uh, Dante Wright, he was killed 10 miles in the court, from the courtroom that I was in trying to get justice for my brother, accountability for my brother. The days that we live in are wicked, but everything I think is going to get better. Um, I have stepped out and I started an institution called the Falonis and Keita Floyd Institution for Social Change, and we're turning our pain into purpose. My family... We want my brother's legacy to be cemented, and we want people to understand that justice for George means freedom for all. And if you can make federal laws to protect the bird, you can make federal laws to protect people of color because the bald eagle is supposed to symbolize greatness around this world. So you just touched on this. The motto here in the U.S. is liberty and justice for all. It may be the nation's motto, but it certainly is not our reality. Do you think, Mr. Floyd, that the Chauvin verdict will help us get there? I think it will. This is a start. Um, this is historic. Uh, 
people of color, we feel like we never get justice for anything. I think that a case that's monumental at this magnitude, it solidifies what we stand for. Uh, people come to this country to be free. They get here to be free. Every time you look up, I get DMs, I get messages, not just in Minneapolis, people are asking, all across Brazil, Ghana, Italy, London, people in Germany, it's they're everywhere. And they all said, maybe you can breathe now because we feel that we can breathe because we marched and protested everywhere just for you. And Mr. Crump, there was another police involved shooting in Columbus, Ohio yesterday. It involved a 15 year old black girl who police say was threatening to others, to other girls with a knife. You are about to leave for Columbus and take on that case. Have you seen the video and what do you make of that incident? Well, I'll, I'll have to check with my office. I don't know if we've been retained, but I think uh, we have to study the video and we have to look at it because just like a George Floyd video, it told us everything we needed to know. Uh, video is a powerful tool in making sure we have truth and transparency, and that leads to accountability. And that's so important because whether well, the officer did something unjustly or the citizen did something unjustly, we want accountability on equal levels. And so that's why we have to look hard at the video in Columbus. Gentlemen, I thank you for your time. Appreciate you. Have a good day. Thank you.